Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about Spark, Apache Spark's data frame API queries. Apache Spark data frame API is used to handle the structured data. So let's see in this today's uh, this little short video that how we can make use of those queries to handle the structured data. So you can see I've already have uh, created one project in this Scala, in this Eclipse IDE, right? And uh, the Spark session already been created. I hope you must be remembering that Spark session is nothing but the unified entry point for a Spark applications. Now let's uh, try to create a data frame first and then we'll be uh, running some queries. This is a part one video. I'll be uh, coming up with different parts uh, because it's a little lengthy topic. So I'll be uh, this showing some, some of the queries in this video, some of the queries in the upcoming videos. Let's get started. First of all, we need to create a data frame. How we can create a data frame? We can create a data frame in many ways, but today in this video, I'll be creating a data frame using a CSV file. So what is the file we are go gonna use today? Very simple file. This is the file in which I got two columns available, ID and tag. I'll be first of all uh, loading this file to my Apache, um, uh, this Eclipse IDE, and then I'll be running some operation on it. So let's get started. First of all, I need to create a data frame with the name DF, and the syntax is spark dot read dot format the format is csv okay and then we have to specify the option because we have seen from the uh, the csv file that my first row should act like a column name so i have to write header true so if you're not using header true what will be the consequence that it will be considering all the rows as the data only so there'll be no column right so dot load load i have to give the path the path is available of this file here, okay? It is in my documents. So let me copy and paste the path here, okay? It should be in double quotes. That's it, we are done with the data frame creation. This is the syntax we're gonna use for data frame creation. Afterwards, how we can verify the data frame is uh, created or not, we have to run a show keyword. The show keyword is equivalent of select star from table name in SQL. So let's run this up and let's check out whether the data is successfully loaded or not. So it is equivalent of uh, creating a table, like create table table name in the SQL and then running select star from table name in SQL. So here we are using a show. It is equivalent of collect in RDD API. So let's see if the table is available. Yes, table is available, right? So we are done with the first query. The second query is how we can print the structure. Like in the case of SQL, we used to have a describe keyword. So here we are having print schema available. The print schema will be displaying the data types of all the columns, the way describe works in SQL. So run as Scala application. So it should display now the table as well as the schema. With the help of show keyword, it will be displaying the uh, table contents or data frame contents. And with the print schema, it will be defining the structure. Afterwards, next query will be, that we, uh, when, when we start learning the SQL, the second thing that we learn is how to specify the condition. So let's first see, this is the schema, right? You can see that columns are of type string and string respectively as per the data set, okay? Moving further, let's apply where clause. In the case of data frame API, the where clause is equivalent of filter. So let's try to filter something, df. Okay, before that filter, let's select some column, okay? Because not every time we have to use show keyword to display all the data. First of all, let's understand how to select a particular column. So we have to use a select, okay, as a keyword. And we need to select, let's suppose, tag. So this will print only the tag, not the entire data. Okay, so let's do it. So run as Scala application. So this particular syntax will help us in printing a particular column. If you want to print more than one column, then you can use comma, tag, comma, ID, comma, something, right? So it will be multiple columns you can print with the select. This is a projection query, right? Projection meaning is projecting a column. So which column? The tag column. Let's see if it's working or not. You can see it's running currently and only the tag column got printed, right? So we are done. Next point is how to how to specify the condition. As I've already stated, we used to have a where clause in SQL. So what we have in, uh, in the case of data frame API, it is the filter query. So let's apply filter now. On the same tag column, I want to apply a filter. The filter may be 
I want to print only the tags where the tag is equivalent of PHP. So the query will be df dot select, and we have to select the tag followed by the filter. So filter, then the tag. Tag is equivalent of PHP. Okay. So this is equivalent of where clause in SQL dot show. Let's print it. Okay. Run as Scala application. So this is equivalent of select and where in SQL. All right, it's working now. Let's see if we can get the answer. Only the PHP tag should be available. Okay, you can see only the PHP tags got printed here. Right, this is how we can make use of filter in the case of data frame API. Moving further, let's see how we can make use of SQL like query. Okay, like we used to have a like operator in SQL. The same way we can also apply this like as a part of filter. Okay, let's do it. So what we can do is uh, just copy and paste this. Okay, and then here in the condition we can apply the uh, condition like uh, maybe uh, C percentage. What it means we all are aware that like operator is used for pattern matching in SQL. So percentage meaning is it can be more than one character, right? I want to display all the tags opening with C. After C, it can be anything. Okay, so this is a simple little example using like operator. Let's see uh, whether we can print those tags which are opening with C. It's again a part of filter. Uh, guys, please remember that all the condition will be a part of filter only. Okay, so earlier we used to have a filter like uh, PHP. Now we have a filter like C. C meaning is opening with C, C alphabet. Okay. Let's see if it's working fine or not. Okay, we have a, some syntax error. Okay, yeah, I got it. I have to enclose in single quotes. Okay, that's why it is error is coming. Now it's okay. Now we can run it again. So make sure the condition, this uh, particular thing we have to give in single quotes. Like in the PHP also, I have given single quotes here. I just forgot to mention this uh, pattern in single quotes. That's why error came. So it is tag like space single quote c percentage single quotes and it is this complete query is enclosed in double quotes let's see if it's working you can see uh, these are all the tags opening with c c sharp css css3 everything right so it's working very fine moving further next we are having multiple filter chaining multiple filter chaining meaning is like how we can apply more than one filter so let's do it now in the same query we can also add another filter so i'm just copy and pasting this code and before the show i want to apply uh, another filter uh, filter okay the filter is i want to apply for id okay so let me check out uh, how yeah id tag yes is i capital id is equal to of four or id is equal to of maybe six so i hope it is clear what we have done so in this case this is called as a multiple filter chaining why it is called multiple filter chaining because we are having more than one filter available one filter taking care of c this one the all the tags starting with c other filter is taking care of that the where the filter the only those rows should be displayed where the id is equal to 4 or 6 so now let's check out whether it's working fine or not this is called as a multiple filter chaining in which we are having more than one filter available so let's check out if it's working or not it's currently running so yeah got it so these are the tags which is these are the rows which are fulfilling this condition where the tag tag like c and where the filter where the id is equivalent of four or six this is called as a multiple filter chaining the same query can be done with the, using the in clause as well like we used to have a in clause in sql the same way we can do the same query how copy and i'm pasting it here and instead of using or I can also specify here in how let's see ID in four four 
comma 6. So both these queries are same. We all are, we all are aware that in clause is used as an alternative to OR clause. To in, uh, instead of using multiple ORs, you can also replace those multiple ORs with a single IN. So let's print it. Okay, I am uh, commenting this and let's see if we are getting same answer in this case or not. Although, the, although both the queries are equivalent, okay, maybe you can use this query or this query is okay, but when you have multiple ORs available, you can replace this with a single IN. Let's see if it's working. So a couple of queries are left. Now the other set of queries I'll be covering in the next video. You can see the same answer we got. This is called in clause in data frame API. Next is group by. Group by uh, is one of the very important uh, operation in data frame is also very important in SQL where we want to club all the similar things together. Okay, I want to club the tags. Okay, all the tags and I want to know each tags count means I want to know how many times C sharp is coming, how many times CSS is coming, how many tab, uh, times PHP is coming. It means I want to uh, I want to find out how many rows match each tag in our data frame. So how we can do it? It's very simple. DF dot group by group by okay group by uh, mind you is used to club all the similar things together and every group by must be having its corresponding aggregate operator. So in this case, we are using count. So tag and then dot count, okay, dot show. Let's now run it, okay. So what this query says, this query says, I want to find out how many rows matching each tag in our data frame. And I am grouping by the tag column and I am printing its corresponding count. Let's see what's the answer. So it will be club the similar things together. You can see we got answer, okay? The pi tag is available one time, Unix two times in this way, right? I hope it's clear. And the last tag for today that we can uh, also uh, extend the same query, okay? Let's, like in the case of SQL, we used to have a, have a having clause, right? If you want to define the condition, let's suppose I want to print those tags whose count is more than, let's suppose two. So how we can do it, it's equivalent of having in SQL. So just after count, I want to apply the filter. Filter and here we can specify the condition where count is more than maybe two dot show. And this query is equivalent of a group by with having in SQL, okay? So this filter is taking care of the having clause of SQL, let's run it. So instead of displaying the count of every tag, I want to display only those tags whose count is more than two. And this is equivalent of having in SQL. It's currently running. Let's check out. Yeah, we got the answer in which all the all those tags got printed whose count is more than two. You can see nine, three, three, right? I hope you must have understood from this short little video. I'll be coming up with the next video in which the, the remaining commands will be discussed, right? Thanks for watching guys. See you next video.